Hi. A while back, we did a review of the Think Car Think Diag2 diagnostic tool. So this is a tool that plugs into your vehicle and allows you to do things like reading codes, but also more advanced features like bi-directional tests, as well as uh, communications and programming and service functions with all of the modules in the vehicle. Now, this is a really nice tool. Um, it plugs into the OBD2 port and connects via Bluetooth to your personal phone where you can download the app and then do all of the um, service functions. But obviously the downside there is it uses your phone and some people might want to have a dedicated tool rather than using their phone every time they're working on their car. So that's why we're gonna have a look today at this ThinkScan Max 2, which is a handheld tablet device. And then it has a Bluetooth module that plugs directly into the vehicle and then allows you to connect to it through the tablet and then we have all of the service functions on the tablet here. And this one does offer a few extra services compared to the previous tool. So we've got this big list, I think there's 28 service functions that you can perform on your vehicle. So the tool comes in this nice carry case with ThinkCar on the outside. We've got an actual user manual, which is nice. Uh, it comes with a USB-C charger cable, as well as a charger with various different options for the plug. There is no OBD2 cable on this one. All you need to do is plug this into the OBD2 port on your car, and then it communicates via Bluetooth to the tablet device. So the tablet is where most of the magic is. I think this is a fairly generic OBD2 Bluetooth transceiver. So we've got the adapter plugged into the car, and the ignition is on. So now we need to go to scan, and I found the quickest way is to select the brand of car rather than do an automatic search. That seems to be a lot quicker. Go to, whoops, go to diagnose, and it will establish a connection to the vehicle, confirm the vehicle type, and then it will present you with some options. So we want to do an automatic search. Yeah. Now for speed, if you want to go to a particular module in the car you can do that but the easiest way to do it is just do a full system scan and that tells you about all of the modules in the vehicle and a short while later as you can see we've got all of the modules that were equipped on this particular vehicle um, so let's have a look at the pcm which is the engine computer and then we can read fault codes for example And after a short while, we get the intake air temperature sensor uh, control circuit. So it's basically saying that I've disconnected the temperature sensor. And if we click on that, we get a bit more detail. So it actually goes on to Google and gives us some clues on how you might want to diagnose that. So we'll go back. And with the fault now fixed, we can go to clear DTCs. And you can see here, there's no errors. So as you can see, it's really easy to read and clear codes on your car, but obviously it's not that likely that your diagnostics is gonna be that simple. So we have extra functions. We can do things like reading live data. So we can read a few things. Um, what we've got here, the load value for the car, the temperature of the cat, and we'll look at um, the coolant temperature, for example, press OK on those. And we can read in real time these values so you can see exactly what's going on. And this is actually for any module in the car, not just the engine computer. You can do things like reading the door module so you can see the position of the door switches and the windows and that kind of thing. You can also plot these on a graph. And then in real time, you can see what's going on. So if I press the accelerator, you can see what's going on with each of those values. And as you take it for a drive, you can look at these numbers and you can also save them for reading back later. So for example, we can go to the body control module instead of the PCM. And we can read live data again. And for example, let's just go to the dimmer switch. So that's already selected, press OK. And then I've got a switch here which allows me to change the interior illumination for the car. And if I change the dial on that, 
you can see in real time, it's updating. So this is really useful for functions outside of the engine. If you're not having something that's working properly, for example, the window switches aren't working properly, then you can see in real time whether the body control module is reading that sensor properly or whether you've got a problem downstream, for example, um, with the LEDs or with the motors for winding the windows up and down and that kind of thing. So as well as the manufacturer specific data, we can also just go to generic OBD2, which can be quite handy in certain instances. So go to diagnose and it will attempt to connect with the vehicle. At this point, it doesn't know what it is. It's using generic OBD commands to communicate with the car. And so here, this is only associated with the engine management. So we can't do the diagnostics on other modules on the car, but this is generic OBD2 data. Now, I don't think we've got any fault codes now because I cleared them and I rectified that fault. So it says no fault codes, uh, but we can still read live data that would be available just to a generic tool. So again, we've got airflow rate from the math and you can see there it's reading that in the grams per second. And once again, you can still plot that on a graph should you want to. And it will give you that in real time so that you can plot things as you're driving it or testing. So on this tool, we've got 28 different service functions here, like uh, bleeding the ABS system. We can do things like resetting the battery management system or doing a forced DPF regen clearing the EGR learned values and um, things like for the gearbox, you can reset the learned values. You can do programming of the immobilizer and of the injectors and all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of built-in functions here, 28 different ones for working on your vehicle. Things that wouldn't normally be possible with a generic tool, you do need something that can talk to your specific vehicle to perform these functions. Some of these are automatic functions, so they actually need the computer to do it. Otherwise, it will give you instructions on how to do things. So, for example, on this car, you can't reset the oil service interval from a diagnostic tool. But if we go to here, just give it a moment to connect. And then you can see here, it just says manual reset. And it gives you the instructions for how to do it for your car. So if we go down to Mondeo. And then it gives you the instructions on how to actually reset the service light uh, because you can't do it through the OBD2 port on this vehicle. And so as you can see, this is a fully featured scan tool with all of the features that you might need to do to do detailed diagnostics on your vehicle. And the nice thing about this one is that it does have free lifetime updates for everything that we saw in this section here. So uh, when we we're doing the actual diagnostics, all of that remains free to update for the lifetime of the unit. The only options that you have to pay for after the initial period, I think you get a year to use all of these features uh, for the actual ECU coding, you know, so you can code the injectors and that kind of thing. After that one year, you do have to purchase licenses. And from what I can see here, it looks like it's about $50 for a license per vehicle brand. So if you happen to be a DIYer and have a couple of different cars in your household, it can get a little bit expensive. I'm sure they do offers because they seem to offer uh, promotional pricing for the ThinkDiag2 all the time. So I would hope that they do the same thing on the ThinkScan. But um, one thing to bear in mind there is there is a hidden cost for these maintenance and service functions after the one year from when you get the unit. Now, in terms of the tablet, it seems to be quite a robust unit. And I have seen this particular design for some other devices in the market. So I think it's a tried and tested unit. The battery life seems to be pretty good. So I've had it on for about four or five hours and we're only down to 81%. Uh, so that's pretty good. Uh, we do have some options on here. So we've got Wi-Fi for all of the updates and for um, connecting to the internet if we want to look at Chrome uh, to do some of the diagnostics. Uh, we can do screen capture, both video and pictures, and we can change the orientation of the screen. Uh, and obviously we've got things like the screen brightness and the volume, but it's quite a simple tablet. It's purposely locked down um, so that it's only designed to be used with the ThinkScan Max 2 software. So a really decent unit here for the serious DIYer, but also for commercial use. It only lacks a few features compared to the much more expensive machines. Uh, first of all, we've got a limited screen size. This is a fairly small tablet. 
And the other limitation that I found is that when you're streaming live data, you're only allowed to plot four data streams. Although you can view more than four on the screen at once as numbers, when you plot it, you're limited to four. And I think some of the more expensive machines allow you to plot more than four, but that shouldn't be a limitation for most diagnostics. So if you are interested in taking a look at this, I'll put a link to this device and also the ThinkDio 2 in the description down below. If you've got any thoughts or comments, leave them in the comment section down below. And until next time, thanks for watching. <laughs>